Hello, Jerry Deeming here with a mini lecture on non-informative prior distributions for use in Bayesian parameter estimation. As a reminder, the goal of Bayesian parameter estimation is the posterior distribution for the parameter, and this posterior is proportional to the likelihood times the prior. So we might be interested in a situation where uh, we want a prior for theta that perhaps lets the data speak for itself or is a prior that's good for just default general scientific use. This, uh, these objectives as well, there are others, but these objectives come under many names. We might talk about non-informative or vague or objective or reference or default priors. Uh, some of these terms have very specific meanings, uh, but are often used interchangeably with non-informative. I will try to be consistent here and just use non-informative. All right, so it seems as though the, the answer could be very clear here. One answer is to simply take this prior and set it equal to 1. If we do that, then the posterior distribution is proportional to the likelihood, that is, to the piece that actually have the data. All right, so it seems like we might be done. We have a non-informative prior distribution. It's simply the uniform prior on whatever range that parameter takes. All right, so let's investigate this a little further. Uh, in the case of our binomial model that we've been considering quite a bit. So typically, we parameterize the binomial model as with using the success probability theta. And here I've written the probability mass function as a function of theta. All right, so we might say, what is a good non-informative prior for theta? And using the the rationale that we just uh, presented on the previous slide, we might say, all right, let's make it uniform. And since the success probability can only take values between 0 and 1, it's going to be uniform on the range 0, 1. All right, that all seems fine and dandy. This seems like a reasonable prior. It gives equal probabilities to equal prior probabilities to any value of the success probability, equal prior probability to any equal, equally large range in the range 0 to 1. So it seems like a pretty reasonable non-informative prior. What happens, though, if we, instead of parameterizing this problem with theta, parameterize it instead with the odds? Here represented as O. The odds here are just, it's the success probability divided by the failure probability. And now written above, it's the probability mass function as a function of the odds rather than the success probability. Using the, using the ideas that we just created in the last slide, well, we're going to just use a uniform prior, but now because the odds range from 0 to infinity, it's a uniform prior on 0 to infinity. All right, so instead of using this parameterization, we could perhaps use the log odds parameterization. And now again, we're going to create a uniform prior, but since the log odds can take values from negative infinity to positive infinity, it's uniform on that interval. So immediately it should be clear that the latter two of these are, quote, are not actually true density functions for our parameter. That is, they do not integrate to 1. We will introduce this in a moment, but that is called an improper prior. In contrast, this prior here for the success probability is in fact proper. The log odds prior on uniform negative infinity to infinity, um, this is actually the natural parameter for the in the exponential family notation of the binomial model. And this turns out to be equivalent to the improper beta 0, 0 prior on theta. So recall the uniform 0, 1 prior is the beta 1, 1. So between this one and this one, we have a beta 1, 1, and we have a beta 0, 0. All right, so the the key here is that this rule that we had tried to define of using a uniform prior, it depends on the parameterization that we actually used. So Jeffries argued that any non-informative prior that we want should be invariant to the parameterization that's actually used. And it turns out that if you create a prior that's proportional to the square root of the Fisher information, and we call this the Jeffries prior, it turns out that that prior is, in fact, invariant to the parameterization that's used. 
So in this binomial model, this actually leads to a beta one-half, one-half prior. All right, so I want to now take a look at the different priors that we've been talking about for this success probability parameter. The first prior that we've talked about is the uniform 0, 1, otherwise known as the beta 1, 1 prior, and that's given here by the solid black line. This prior seems to intuitively do what we want in that it gives equal probability to any value of theta, of the success probability. In contrast, this non-informative Jeffries prior, the beta 1 half 1 half prior, shown in the red dashed line, this actually gives less probability, prior probability, to pro probability, success probabilities around 0.5 and higher prior probability to success probabilities closer to 0 and closer to 1. The prior that was uniform on the log odds, that is the improper beta 0, 0 prior, uh, cannot actually be pictured here, but I tried to get one that's close, this beta 0 0.01, 0 0.01 prior, and what you see is very little prior probability anywhere in the middle, and very high prior, prior probability at 0 and at 1. In fact, if you take, if you wanted to look at the improper beta zero zero prior, it would have infinite mass at zero and at one, and no mass anywhere in between. All right, so it begs the question here: which of these is non-informative? And for that, we would really need a much more rigorous definition of what it means to be non-informative. Nonetheless, Jeffrey's prior here gives us a reasonable rule for creating prior distributions for its scalar parameters. All right, the other option, oh, before we get there, um, if the prior that you are using is improper, for example, that beta zero zero prior, um, and this is a common occurrence when using any rule to specify creation of, of non-informative priors, including Jeffrey's rule, sometimes it does generate improper priors. Um, all right, so we should probably define what I mean by proper. The first thing is that if you have a density or something that you'd like to call a density, we call it proper if it integrates to something that's not infinite. And it's improper if its integral is infinity. If you have a density that integrates to some number that's not 1, then you can simply create a density by dividing the density you have by whatever it integrates to. Okay, so what I was trying to get to is that if you have an improper prior, you should always check to ensure that the posterior is proper. In particular, in the example we've been using of the improper beta zero zero prior, the posterior we already know from previous work, the posterior is a beta y and minus y, and this is only going to be proper if y is not 0 and n minus y is not 0. That is, y is not equal to n. If either of those two situations occur in your particular data set, then this posterior will be improper. Okay, and an alternative method for creating non-informative priors is to use proper priors and make them vague. Right, so for example, both the beta 1, 1 and beta 0 0.5, 0 0.5 are proper, but neither of these provide very much information about the parameter theta, and therefore in some sense they are non-informative. And ultimately, there is very little difference in the inference between using these priors and using the beta 0, 0 prior, as long as you have a reasonable sample size. And with the proper priors, you're ensured that the posterior is proper. All right, so in summary, I introduced Jeffrey's prior, and as the prior that's invariant to transformations, certainly a desirable property. If you are using improper priors, you want to check and make sure that the posterior is proper. You can use, alternatively, you can use vague proper priors to ensure that the posterior is proper. So all this discussion um, about non-informative, about Jeffrey's prior, gets much, much harder in higher dimensions, that is, as the parameter vector itself grows. 
they become it becomes much harder to find what it means to be non-informative and harder to find you given a definition of what the non-informative prior actually is.